But you guys are in for a treat today because this is none other than the winner of the Women's 2022 Ironman World Championships. Yep, this is Chelsea Sedaris BMC Time Machine 01 disc. Now we have literally just grabbed this bike off Chelsea the day after winning the Ironman World Championship. So we do apologize for any sweat, dirt, grime on the bike. And I will get into the specifics of her setup for her win at the Ironman World Championships. But before I do, let's touch on the bike itself because the BMC Time Machine is a well-proven bike. It's had a lot of success, not only in triathlon, but also cycling. And it's the exact same frame set. Because what's interesting about this bike is that you can set it up both in this forward position by mounting the seat post here, as Chelsea has, and also in a backwards or rear position through the seat post mounting slot here. So for cycling, where they need to be five centimeters behind the bottom bracket, they can just mount the seat post there. So a really clever design. And they're also actually one of the first TT or triathlon bikes to actually start to implement disc brakes on their bikes. So actually the disc brake version of this time machine was released back in 2018. Now, it's worth pointing out that Chelsea actually races for and supported by the BMC Pro Triathlon team. So a lot of the kits and equipment that you're going to see on this bike come through there. But there are, of course, some personal choices. So let's dive on into the specifics of her setup. Now, with the BMC Time Machine, you can actually opt for a couple of positions with the base bar, a more aggressive, lower position. But then by simply flipping the bars, you can go for this, I guess you call it, more relaxed or high position. It's obviously a position that just suits Chelsea better. Coming up from that, she's actually swapped out the OEM's standard bars that come with the bike for these Aero Coach bars and cups. Now, what's interesting about these Aero Coach cups is how high they come up and cup round the elbows. And that just helps that sort of secureness or stability in the aero bars. And actually you find a lot of people talking about pushing out on them a little bit and that helps to get the head down. Also the aero bars have kind of got this groove in them to allow you to rest your forearms into them. And then we've got these very ergonomic grips at the end just so you can grip onto them with the buttons on the end. She's also opted for the 76 Projects mount, which you can adjust the angle and the width of them on. It's a very neat design, which she's then got her Wahoo bolt attached to. Also here, let's talk about her hydration setup and choices because she's actually opted for just a standard bottle cage here between the aero bars. It's on quite a clever mount that comes up from between these aero coach bars. It's sort of on like a little bracket that extends forward. So it's an optimal position for her. But yeah, she's gone for standard bottle cages so that she can obviously just grab bottles on the go. She's also got one mounted behind her saddle. And then she's got the Elite Chrono CX aero bottle on the down tube. Now you can also on this bike have a storage box that goes behind the seat post over here and it kind of slots into that gap for the UCI legal setup that you'd put the seat post into. She's opted not to use that storage box and instead she's actually neatly just slotted a CO2 cartridge and one of the muck off valves just underneath the saddle there. And now moving on to the componentry and group set choices for this bike. So this is Shimano Durace Di2 on this bike. So you can see the Durace crank set on here. She's running that in a 165 mil crank length with Durace pedals on the end. So it's also got power meter built into it. Technically it's the Shimano Durace power meter, although it is a 4i power meter built in. She's running 5542 chain rings, which is pretty optimal for this fast course here in Kona, and that's paired with 1128 cassettes. Now ordinarily this team works with Muckoff, so what they do is get their chains through from Muckoff and they analyze them after. So they whip them off after a race, send them off to Muckoff, and Muckoff will then optimize it for them. The torque they're putting through it, the conditions, and so on. So really clever stuff. She's actually, on this bike, got Shimano Dura Ace rear mech. Maybe that's just down to availability. We're all well aware of the issues over the past few years. But coming down from that, they've obviously changed out the jockey wheels. Ahead of this race, she's dropped this bike into ceramic speed and they've whacked the OSPW jockey wheels on there with the aero fairing. And then finally, the wheels. She's running DT Swiss Arc 1100 wheels, 62 both front and rear. And then on those, she's got the Hutchinson Racing Lab prototype tires, 25 mil 
front and rear. And interestingly, she's actually running latex tubes on those. And then the only final thing is the saddle. She's got the ISM PN 3.0 saddle, and she's actually put a cable tie around the front. Not the first time we've seen that, just to pull the front end a little bit closer together, just to perfect it for her. And finally, I don't have the scales with me today, unfortunately. We were given this spike in a bit of a hurry, and obviously we're very excited to be able to feature it here. But what I can do is a free hub sound check. Here we go. Nice stuff. Well, I hope you have enjoyed today's video and enjoyed us just running through the winning bike for the 2022 Ironman World Championships. Let us know what you think to it in the comment section down below. If you've enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe.